and so being young and dipped and fallen I fell in love with melancholy Do you remember that fateful night out on the estuary? So bewitched was I with the reflection of the moon on the water that I imagined you swallowing me whole, snaring me into your riptide. How I'd sink, drowning like the sun into the horizon. How soothing it would be to feel each crushing wave administer its anaesthetic. It was then, in that quiet reverie, that I first heard you calling me. Since that night in late February, the perfume lingers. Your whispers permeate my pores having taken root in the space behind my eyes. My ears are tuned only for the deliverance of your soul. I, the sullen weed amongst a pack of sunflowers, used to hanging my head in heavy shame, found myself entangled in your tendrils, and in your shade began to grow. And so our romance blossomed, so sweet was the dusk, so eager was I, trading that golden sun for silver moon. With spider silk strength, I drew closer to the web. Having been promised so much, I let hope blot out the light. For you, for only you, in service to the night. And so, with blinking eyes, I perceived the world anew. Your black light revealed their filth. That sickly warmth and glowing light betrayed their clammy veneer. My vision cast down onto the pavement below. Observe the creatures, washed glossy from the rain. Night walks through me, I remain. In time we dwelled for many moons. I barely noticed the passage of time. It was a week ago today that I ran into a friend. One of those last golden ties he invited me to dinner. A night amongst friends that I hadn't seen in years. Remember the vow you made. I heard you whisper. You spent so long in the dark. How do you expect to be seen by those in the light? And with that, the glowing spark, that golden ember, was once more smothered by your silver. Night walked me off my feet, forward, past, away. I came to you with silent prayer. Through the heavy rain, I scaled that bridge once more. These dark clothes, once a cloak of anonymity, now clung to me, choked me, fused with prickled skin. I called to you. Help me, please. Yet salvation was nowhere to be found on that mountaintop. Shivering, 
he met me with cold words. The brightest of my lovers gave all. Your suffering and turmoil spring from the ashes. With total devotion, you'd be free at last. Gone were your soft scarlet whispers, and in their stead barbs. There I stood, in naked rage caught unawares. Yet what else did I have, having ventured up that dark mountain, and away from the lights below? I gave you everything, leaving no strength left to fight. And yet, a restlessness grew inside me. The pressure causing cracks, and through them seeped dread. Try as I did to bail, oblivion failed me. Like the sun's rays creeping through gaps in the curtain. I could not seem to fall back to sleep, despite how tightly I clamped my eyes. Once a place where wishes dwelt, those dreams began to haunt me. Too sweet, too tight, too doomed. My aching limbs twitched, each with their own grievance. Had I so easily been seduced into the shade, having no care to mind the path I had taken. I was lost on that mountain top, scrambling frantically in the dark. Your whispers etched into my mind, conducting my frustration to panic, to anger and to apathy, only to go round again, like a rabid dog chasing its own tail. Was this really what it was to have you as my only companion? Are those, those lingering embers that seem to smolder in my heart? Those golden embers that persisted despite your attempts to drown them. Perhaps, perhaps it was those, I thought, that held my best interest at heart. It was then I understood. Do you remember that fateful night out on the estuary? So bewitched was I with the reflection of the moon on the water that I imagined you swallowing me whole, snaring me into your riptide. A year has passed since then and I have yet to drown. You see, those glowing embers that burn through the night, that embed themselves within the hearts of men. They're not malevolent spirits, nor are they the architects of needless pain. Rather, those embers are beacons Lanterns in the dark. Lights that never go out. It's clear to me now that the tales you spun of men burned to ash by fire always concealed one vital detail. 
that the heat of the heart burns only those things that weren't there to begin with. For the first time, my eyes are open and I see. Our affair was never one of mutual love, but one of confinement, one of self-preservation. Those vows, pledged under duress of the dark, no longer bind, nor demand to be upheld. And so to you, Lady Melancholy, I have but one thing left to say. Your black light will dominate my heart no longer, for as true as the seasons, no winter lasts forever. No spring skips its turn.